If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, or if you require answers to specific health care questions or concerns, you should consult your physician or health care provider and not depend solely on information presented in this program. And hello, I'm Dr. Steve Garner, and welcome to Ask the Doctor. It's great to be with you today. This is our 14th season, and as you know, this program was created to assist you in understanding medical issues so you can take charge of your own health. Now, it's more important than ever to be an informed patient, and we're here to help bring you timely health discussions. For those who are new to the show, there are two ways to get your questions in. First, you can call our live phone line at 718-499-6101. And second, you can email your questions to askthedoctor at netny.net, and we'll bring them into a discussion. Now, for this episode, we have Dr. Segarika Nalu. She's a pediatric neurologist, she's an epilepsy specialist, adult adults, uh, neurologist, sleep medicine person, and also internal medicine, maybe? No. She's got it. It's like uh, 20 people. We had to get extra furniture for her tonight. But uh, it's great to have her with us. She's been here before, big crowd favorite here, and it's great to have you back. We have Dr. Ramin Meristami, who's been scheduled, unfortunately, had a jinx here. We had three cancellations. He's here in person tonight in the studio, and he does, in addition to internal medicine, pulmonary medicine, so you can talk about your asthma, your chronic lung disease, and, and that. So welcome, Dr. Meristami. And of course, Dr. Anastasia Nikitina, who's no stranger to the Ask the Doctor show, cardiology attending at New York Methodist Hospital, and welcome to you, too. Now, in the news, it's been, um, it's been a busy week, news-wise, medicine-wise, and one thing that happened was that strokes can happen during your sleep. It kind of makes you want to stay up all the time when you hear this kind of thing. But apparently one in seven strokes happen while people are sleeping. And the problem is that this hurts your chance to get in in a timely fashion. If you've had a stroke that would be um, able to be treated, if you get in after a couple of hours, it may be too late to get the benefit. So it's, it's something we have to figure out because you're at one out of seven of these strokes is happening with people sleeping at night. As, as always, though, any sudden problem with weakness of one side of the body, uh, problems with your balance or walking, problems with vision or speech, uh, you, you feel confused or you have sudden severe headache, you want to get right in. You don't want to start playing games. You just get right to the hospital, particularly if you wake up with the stroke. So that's one thing. Now, another thing, baby boom. Is in, you know what age baby boom is? Uh, what, when, from when to when? 50 to 60. 50 to 60. About 46 mm -hmm. to 64 are baby boomers, and they're turning in their 50s, late 50s, 60s this year. And something interesting, that study found that the baby boomers today are less healthy than their parents were, and they also weigh more. And I would have thought that, you know, with all the workouts and so on, and better food, and, but apparently they're eating a lot more processed food, they're popping more pills. The average 50-year-old is taking four prescription medications a day. So the baby boomers are more concerned, according to this study, with their superficial, with their Botox and getting their face done and so on. But they've got to pay a little more attention to diabetes, high blood pressure, and heart disease. So it's something that's a wake-up call because um, as we age, we, we feel like a little invincible and we're not. So baby boomers wake up. Painkillers and heart attacks. Maybe we'll t t get into this with Dr. Nikitina later, but painkillers such as Motrin, just Advil, Motrin, common um, painkillers that are taken by somebody who's had a heart attack gives an increased risk of another heart attack or death of 45% after just one week on the medication. So it's something that's scary. Um, you want to discuss with your doctor if you do need pain medication and you've had heart disease, heart attacks, open heart surgery, that taking these pills known as the NSAIDs or Motrin, Advil, the same. Uh, now one of them didn't show any problem. That was the Aleve. Aleve didn't have any reaction as far as this, so you may want to go on that with your doctor, or baby aspirins. People taking baby aspirins didn't seem to have any problems as well. So something to think about if you've had a heart attack. Now, overuse of CAT scans continues to come up story after story, and this, the latest one was on children. And they found that when children go to the emergency room after having head trauma, they get 50% of CAT, they get CAT scans of which 50% are probably unnecessary. And they get this for the various reasons, such as the doctor wants to appease the parents or wants to practice defensive medicine, doesn't want to get sued, and wants to make sure he's ordered all the tests possible, or just people are rushing in it. Sometimes you're rushing so much, you say, okay, send that patient off the CAT scan, and we'll see it when he comes back. But we have to remember that every CAT scan you get stays in the body. It, it doesn't leave the radiation. 
the effects of the radiation. And after you get five or six CAT scans in your lifetime, you begin to approach increased risk of cancer similar to the Hiroshima survivors. So it's something that should not be taken lightly. If you do need a CAT scan and the doctor examines you and decided that needs to be done, then you don't want to refuse that because it can be life-saving. You just don't want to get a CAT scan that you demanded that the doctor get and he ends up giving in to you. So you always want to ask your doctor, why am I getting this test? Is it absolutely necessary? Is there another way to do this test? And finally, breastfeeding. It seems that babies who are breastfed have improved behavior, that they're less rambunctious, that they play better with their children and with other kids. And uh, it's another good reason to breastfeed. So uh, I don't know if any of you had any experience with that, but uh, you, have, you have children. I have two children. Are they well behaved? I hope so. That's good. No, they're well <laughs> behaved. I'm not, not a pomie yet right now. Yeah, no, but uh, <laughs> apparently breastfeeding, aside from the cutting down on infections and making the child less obese also has this benefit. So it's, it's a nice to know. I see Monsignor Benefit, Monsignor Bennett, I was going to say benefit. He's shaking his head yes on that benefit. Monsignor, good to see you tonight and thanks. He's only missed one show in our 14 seasons, which is remarkable. Now we had a quiz. We have a new quiz this week, plus we have last week's quiz that nobody got. So this week's quiz was which president was the first U.S. president to die in office? And he also had the shortest term, 32 days. So he, he campaigns for like three years and gets in, and 32 days he's gone. Which president is this? So while you're thinking about that, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to be going to your questions with the topics of pediatric neurology, sleep medicine, internal medicine, pulmonary medicine, cardiology. Anything you got, we're going to answer. So the number to call is 718-499-6101. Remember, you can also email us questions to askthedoctor at netny.net. We'll be right back. Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on net. And welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are pediatric neurology, sleep medicine, internal medicine, cardiology, and pulmonary medicine. And before we're going to meet the doctors, I just want to thank three people that helped get me here today. First, Dr. Jim, Jim Sconzo, noted dentist, had a chipped tooth. He stepped right in and filled the tooth. So I want to, Dr. Sconzo, thank you on that. Vinny the barber, I need to say no more. Picture's worth a thousand words, but he's improving. No, Vinny's a good barber. And of course, Okinawas, o Okeanos? on uh, 7th Avenue and 8th Street or 9th Street. What a great restaurant. Stephanie's there. If you mention her, she'll, I don't know what she'll do, but just mention the show, ask the doctor, sure. who knows. <laughs> Have you eaten in there, Dr. Yeah, Nimble? it's great food. Isn't like it great? It. Yes. And it's good for you. It's Mediterranean diet and stuff. Yeah. So let's, let's get right. We're already, um, we're already talking with Dr. Nalu, so we'll jump right into that. So what are, we, ha we haven't seen you for about three months. Three months. I don't know how you lived without us. No, but I know. We, we had a hard time, but <laughs> tell me, what's new? Well, Everything is good, waiting for the summer, the weather change, and What's market. your favorite sport? Like, do you like to do a little hobby in the summer, work out, or what do you like to do? Well, I'm, I'm, I watch all kind of um, football, baseball, you know. Who's all. your favorite team? Yankees, of Me course. Yeah, yeah, Yankees. Very good. Woman after my own heart there. But thank you. So we're going to get to all your questions. You've got so many specialties. Epilepsy, child neurology, adult neurology, sleep disorder. All right. Anything to leave one out? <laughs> No, I think we covered it. Very all. good. <laughs> Excellent. And Dr. Miristami, who's finally made it to the, to the show, it's great to see you. Does he look like an actor a little bit, do you think? I don't know. I don't know. The women were commenting on the beginning of the show. But uh, anyway, tell us a little bit about, um, now you went to school in Oklahoma? I went to college in Oklahoma. Wow. And uh, then I went to uh, South America for medical school. I came back here. And uh, I did my residency in, uh, in the Bronx. What's life in Oklahoma like? A little slow? <laughs> Oklahoma yeah. is Oklahoma. I don't want to insult I had a lot of Oklahoma fun, actually. I had, a, I had a good time there. Yeah, I played soccer there for a Big 8 tournament. Wow. Big yeah. 8 tournament? Is big that? 8. At that yeah, time, no, it was Big 8. Sport, now yeah. it's Big 10 or Big 12. Oh, it keeps changed. growing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's great. It was fun, yeah. And now, so pulmonary medicine, so people know what questions to ask you. What, sure. what are the common things you see? Um, 
lots of asthma, COPD, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, lung cancer, any, anything related to um, you know, lung as far as uh, cough, shortness of breath, those are the so, common uh, things I see as You're going to get so much business, you're not going to know what to do. Our audience is coughing all the time, so we'll, we're ready for you. And Dr. Nikitina, it's great to see you. Thank you. And you're in cardiology, and you're a very busy cardiologist, right. I know. And I'm looking forward to a summer season because it starts with one holiday and ends with another holiday. Mm -hmm. And in between we have four seasons. Uh, Fourth of July, so. Are you going anywhere? Uh, we're going to be upstate with the family. Oh, that's nice upstate. Yeah, it's Very nice. So it's great to see you back. I know. Thank you. And we're going to go to um, our questions now. I see <coughs> last week's quiz that, that we may have an answer to it. Um, it's from Geraldine in Manhattan. Last week's quiz question was which member of the Bush senior, that's the older, the father, of his residence is said to have earned four times more than even the president did in 1981. So which one earned four times as much as the president in 1981? Geraldine's answer was the White House dog, Millie. I'm going to go to our special effects and see. Is that correct? Hey! I'm speechless. That was, that was a tough question last week. Did, we, did any of you think of Millie the dog? The tough li Dr. Linda Lapatosa, our quiz master, who makes up these questions, really had a little devil in her last week. But she... Uh, oh. She's, she's working on new ones going forward. This was from Millie's book, as dictated to Barbara Bush, was the name of it. So congratulations, congratulations Geraldine, and we'll be sending you the plaque very shortly, okay? Now we're going to see who our first caller is of the day. Could it be Grace? Could it be Maddie? Could it be Joel? Hello? Yes, yes, it's Grace. Grace, hi, Grace, you made it number one again. <laughs> yeah, how, how you doing, everybody there? You all okay? We're all okay. When do you start calling? Do you want to give away your secret as to how you get to be number one so frequently? Well, as soon as I, I, I know the time, and I just immediately, I used to be a TSR, a telephone sales representative, ah, so I know telephone numbers quickly. Ah. And I, dialed, I just dialed and I happened to be the second caller, she said. Were you a first caller? Oh, well, she told me the second. I don't know. Yeah, all right. All right. So, Grace, tell us what your question is. I got a great crew here today, don't I? Yeah, yeah. What about president who died? Oh, you know that one? Who is the... Who well, is the sh I'm thinking of FDR. Oh, FDR. The question that Grace answered, uh, the president that lived only 32 days in the White House, was it FDR? Oh, oh no. No, you didn't say 32. I Grace, Grace. <laughs> Grace, no, you I'm sorry, said, Grace, Grace, you, that TSR didn't, didn't work, it didn't help you here no, with this one. No, but the doctor, you didn't say 32 days from the beginning. You just said what president died while he was in office. You know, you were so busy dialing, I didn't think that Grace <laughs> lost track of the question. But Grace, what can we do for you question-wise? Oh, okay. Well, my legs, you know, with the uh, osteoarthritis, I take soon back once in a while when necessary. But lately now, within the last four weeks, uh, when I went to my doctor, he found my pressure 160 over 90, and he insists that I have to be on uh, uh, hyperpressure medicine. Well, let me see what Dr. Nikitin says about 160 over 90. For Gra Grace, how old are you? 70? 76. Wow. 76 years old. Is 160 over 90 acceptable? Um, the guidelines so, uh, recommends right now blood pressure of 140 over 80 and below. So everything what the, above this number would consider to be hypertension. But before jumping to the conclusion, I always uh, recommend my patient to check blood pressure on several occasions. Uh, better at home, not in a doctor's office, because you always can have a white coat syndrome. <coughs> yeah, and which is when your blood pressure goes up when you see the doctor. Do you yeah. take it at home? But are you getting your... Um, well, he gave me Zestro, and it made me... I was on it two weeks, and I urinated like every hour yeah. on the hour. I was almost getting dehydrated. When I went to him, he checked me, and it was 120 over 90, and he switched my medicine from Zestro to Topo XL. That's well, what I'm on now. Okay. Any comments? In general, it's very good medication. Uh, both of those medications are very good. Um, I would prefer to continue the medication which worked prior to you, and uh, if you are fine with the first medication, um, I would continue with the same. Uh, metoprolol or topol, whatever the uh, doctor gave you as, as, as well, is excellent medication. As long as your blood pressure below the number we mentioned, it's, it doesn't matter what medication you take. Grace? Yeah, well, when I was rechecked, excuse me for interrupting, 
I couldn't take that urination so much, and I was afraid I'd get dehydrated. So he says, we would switch it to Topol XL, and when he checked my pressure, it was 120 over 90. But he says, and now I'm on Topol XL, and I have to be checked this coming Monday. Very good. So you're calls next week. Let me give you one last shot, because I feel bad. I don't want the blood pressure going up. Do you want to take another stab at the quiz? 32, 32 days in office. Well, would it be Taft? I don't know. All right, let's ask. Will, would that answer be Taft? Uh, Grace? Yeah. I want you to sit down, relax. <laughs> okay? But thanks for calling. Well, I have two other beautiful uh, plaques from before. We're going to get you one. Hopefully, next week you'll win, maybe, okay? Okay. Have a nice week. God bless you. And you too. Let's go to Mary on line two. Hi, Mary. Hi, doctor. Where are you calling us from, I'm Mary? I'm calling you from Bay Ridge. Bay Ridge. Mm-hmm. And um, there's a rumor around here you might have the answer to the quiz. I think so. All right, I want you to take a step back. I'm going to repeat the question. Who is the president in office for only 32 days, the shortest of any president? And Mary says? William Henry Harrison. Mary, William Henry Harrison. <laughs> wow. Mary. You won. Yes. <laughs> Very good. What do you think? Is it a letdown or you, uh, you sound a little down? Uh, no, it sounds great. This is, this is the second time I've won. This, a two-time winner. Very yes. rare. Mm -hmm. Very rare. When did you win last? Uh, oh, about a year and a half ago, I think. Oh, you didn't know our content, the rule that you can't win within a year and a half? <laughs> no. But, so where, where are you going to put this one? Oh, right next to the other one. Where's the other I'm one? I've got a paper hole wall with them. Yeah, no, no, that's great. People come in and ask about it? Uh-huh. Any oh, other? Oh, sure. Yeah. So I'm very, uh, very proud of them. And just get one, what's your favorite restaurant out there in Bay Ridge? Oh, we have so many good ones. I was to Chadwick's last week, and I was to Greenhouse for Easter, right. and we have a lot of them. I like Chadwick's. Do you ever, anybody ever eat there? I've been there, yeah. Delicious place. I think underrated for food. You walk in, and you think it's a bar, and then you sit, and you realize the food is delicious. It's delicious. Very good. Very good. So <laughs> I'm really glad you won. Is there any question we could help you with? Uh, I don't think so, no. Thank very, you very, very good. much. So Enjoy it, the it program. Sh it should be on its way. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye. All right, let's go to Jim on line three. Hi, Jim. Good evening, Dr. Gardner. Good evening to the other doctors on the panel. Good to hear from you. Uh, I, I knew President Harrison, too, but that's okay, because I already have a plaque. You have a plaque, too? Yeah, wow. yeah, yeah. We've got more plaques in the dentist's office here. But anyway, <laughs> what can we do for you tonight? So um, I have a question for Dr. Nell, who the uh, neurologist. Uh, my wife was diagnosed with epilepsy uh, almost 30 years ago, and since then she's been on medication. She's on uh, Tegretol, and but she hasn't had a seizure in over 20 years, and I was just wondering, uh, is there any chance of gradually getting off the medication? Yes. Um, actually, the, the most of the neurologists, what we do is we once we put the patients on medications for seizure, we repeat the EEG um, yearly, and if the EEG continues, the, uh, the brainwave test um, for the seizures continues to be normal, then we give the patient a taper. We taper the medications, and we give um, the patient the trial, and we wait and watch. If, he, if the patient has another seizure, we put them back on medication. But if the patient does not have any more seizures, so we, we can taper them off the medications. Yeah, because actually what's, what's happened is her neurologist moved out to Arizona, and she continued to get the medication prescribed by her regular internist, but she never went for EEGs or anything like that. She really hasn't had a neuro neurological workup in 20 years, you know, and like I said, she's been seizure-free. So uh, could she make an appointment to see you, or do you only deal with kids? No, I see both adults and pediatrics for seizures. So, yes, she can definitely make an appointment with us. So, Jim, thanks a lot for the call. Where are you calling us from? Uh, Massbeth, Queens. Massbeth. And what's the best place out there? There's one with brothers or guys? Somebody yeah, wants three sons, yeah. Have you made it out there yet? You know, maybe this, maybe this Saturday. It's been a hectic time, but I, I want to get out there. Okay, very good. Thank Look you, Jim. To it. Okay. Joe, how you doing? All right. Were you, oh, this Joe Stiles? Yes, it is. Ah, it's great to hear from you, Joe. Yeah, how are you doing, Doctor? All right. Very good. Are you related to Danny Stiles? 
No, no, I was a good friend of his, though. I went to his 75th birthday party. Yeah, he just passed away. He already passed away. Him and Jack Lane were good friends of mine. Jack Lane just passed away. I didn't know that. I'm uh, going to give you one of his cards when I see it with his creed on it. These were great music they, they on the radio. These were people radio that played. Radio's great. Doc, I got to tell you something. You make an image, you're all mine and lead on what you do. I missed that. What was the end? I said, you make your image, your role model, and then lead in what you do. Oh, thank you very much, Joe. Thanks a lot. I'm, I'm going to talk to you about my new medicine I'm taking for my thyroid that I was on the air about. We have Dr. Miristami here who's going to try and help us out with this. So tell, us, that? About, tell us about that. Uh, what, what I'm doing? Well, I am on Citroid now. They raised it to 112 MCGs. I got, a, I got an endocrinologist working on it. He's had this me is that a little nodule in the thyroid? Yeah, you know, I had a swollen. They wanted to operate a couple of years ago, but it's not cancerous. I had a, I had a biopsy done by computer by this guy, Dr. Mikowitz. See, that's all he does. He only, he only does neck and head. You know who sent me there? One of the x-ray Dr. Rosenthal sent me there. He said, he's one of the best in the business. We all go there. You know where he is with my Molly. Dr. Mir Stami, you seeing a lot of any thyroid cases? We do, we do. Well, this. I don't know. I think this medicine helped me as long as it's not doing any damage. Synthroid. Let's just see. He's on Synthroid. He has a little nodule. I'm on 112 now. I, I was on for 40 and then 80. And now I'm up to 112, and he wants to see what's happening. Joe, Joe, I want, I want to hear Dr. Mir Stami's <laughs> voice. He's waited three years to get on the show. He's, he's getting ready. Here it is. I, I think, Joe, um, you know, uh, you, you did the right thing. Uh, your doctors sent you for a biopsy, and uh, you had to buy that, that was the most important yeah, everything. thing. I'll tell you, doctor, <laughs> uh, the first guy we wanted to operate, a uh, guy down in Long Island College, I said, I'm not, I got no pain. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get more, I'm going to get more, uh, you know, doctors to look at it, uh, other opinions. Well, so you then know, I was talking with the doctors one night, and they sent the canologist. He knew all about girders and thyroids. I'm going to take care of you personally. So that's how I, I'm with him now, and he just seems to be doing the job. Well, you know, you, you, did, did, you ever hear about this guy, Mikowitz? A lot of all the X-ray people go to him. I understand. Right, so I, Joe, I did. Yeah, let, let, me is, just, uh, let me get Dr. Uh, Maristami just to give a summary because we've got to move on. You, listen to the summary. You, you, you did the right thing. You know, the biopsy was done. You wanted to make sure it's not cancerous and it's not. And uh, sometimes the endocrinologists, some of them, they give you uh, medications such as what you're taking, Synthroid to try to shrink the nodule. So follow with your doctor, and they'll tell you when you have to cut down the medication or come off of it. Joe, looking forward to seeing you come by for lunch one day. God bless. I'll, I'll have, uh, have lunch one afternoon. We'll talk. Thanks, Joe. Take care. A remarkable person. He's on the board of several hospitals, and uh, he's 90s, in the 90s. Amazing. Gets around very well. Before we continue with your questions, I just have to give a quick mention about the net. Just like any other pr nonprofit organization, that the net's beginning to feel the pinch of these tough economic times. This is not a pledge drive, just me talking to you. If you enjoy our program, such as Ask the Doctor, then please show your support. Whatever you contribute is appreciated. The main thing is we know you care and that you support us. So, and also, if there's a business out there, a doctor's office, a pharmacy, a restaurant that would like to be the sponsor, the official sponsor of the Ask the Doctor show, please contact the number on your screen. And I want to thank you for um, whatever you can do. Thanks a lot. Now let's get back to the questions. We're going to go to Jerry on line four. Jerry. Yes. Jerry, I, I expected a different Jerry. Very nice. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And what can we, which, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from Bensonhurst. Bensonhurst. What, love, love to go out there to eat. When you go out, where do you go? Well, basically to Vegas. The Vegas diner. I see he just died the owner this week. Oh, I don't know. I haven't been there in a while, but that's where I would normally go. Yeah, he died this week, on, uh, I think on Friday. That's a shame. Yeah, that's a great diner. Anybody been to the Vegas diner? Not to Was that on 86th Street? Street? Yeah. Yeah. You're a little taken aback, I hear, by the news. But uh, he was he lived a long time, but I think he was ill for a while. Well, you know, you really don't want to see anybody go. No, no. What can we do for you? I'd like to let you know, first of all, your show is very informative. Thanks, Jerry. Appreciate it. Watch it all the time. Okay, I have a question. I was diagnosed with sleep apnea. Oh, okay. And I have a CPAP machine. I don't know how anyone could use that, but anyway, I was stuck in the low after because that. Because I use now the nasal pillow, mm -hmm. which is much better than using the face mask. I see. But the problem is, I also am a cardiac patient. I have two stents. I'm also diabetic, high blood pressure, GI problems, the whole nine yards. When I go for surgeries, why is it, being that I have sleep apnea, 
The doctors don't want to give me a general anesthesia. Interesting. Okay, why is that? A lot of the times that, um, you know, since the sleep apnea is when you when you're sleeping is when you're in, um, not able to breathe properly. So the doctors are afraid that when you go under general anesthesia that you might have some complications. So they always ask for patients who have sleep apnea whether the CPAP machines were titrated and at what level of the pressure that they are using so they can use the same kind of pressure or ventilation during the um, procedure. Okay, I have an auto pap machine. I see. I have an auto pap which is auto set for 4.0, but I could feel during the night where the pressure comes very high. There are times it'll go up to 8.5 or even up to 11. Yes. What does that actually mean as far as, you know, why does it go up that high? So basically, the general CPAP is set at the same pressure throughout the night, whereas the auto pap, it regulates according to your breathing. So if you breathe more shallow, uh, at certain times of the night compared to the beginning of the night, it adjusts the pressure according to your breathing. I so there might be some times where you need just pressure of four, and there might be some times where you need a higher pressure. Because it's never on four. Yeah, that, it's that's always, exactly It's no lower <coughs> than eight. Never any lower than eight when I get up in the morning. Mm -hmm. So I hope that, uh, I hope that that helps the question. Uh, again, that seems like a very hard thing to use, that CPAP. You, you think most people get used to it? Um, actually, most people do get used to it, and ones who, you know, like using it, they travel with it all over the world. They they love it, and you know, they. Love, yeah. they That's they what I was control. told that if even if I go someplace overnight, I need to take it because it's it also has a humidifier you, with it. No, you can carry it. You carry yeah. it. Yeah. Well. All you need is a letter from doctor, and you can go through security everything. Yeah, you see, I had gone for a um, sleep test. Mm hmm and when I first went, the first sleep test I had at night, my oxygen level went down to 71. I see. And then when I went for the sleep study with the CPAP, it went up to 95. That's so good. that's why I was told that I needed to have this machine. Yes, definitely. Thanks so much for your call. We appreciate you it. You so kindly, and good luck to everybody. Thank you. Thank right, you. Bye. We're going to take a short break. I'm going to tell Jane she's next, so just hang on, Jane. We're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we're going to go to your questions where the topics of pediatric neurology, sleep medicine, internal medicine, pulmonary medicine, cardiology. We have Dr. Segarika Nalu, Dr. Ramim Miristami, and Dr. Anastasia Nikitna. We'll be right back. Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on NET. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor, where our topics are pediatric neurology, sleep medicine, internal medicine, pulmonary medicine, cardiology. I, I get tired just announcing this thing. <laughs> We're going to go to our questions, but Dr. Miristami had a, a, a final point for this, the sleep apnea question. And uh, what was that, Dr. Well, the point I was trying to make, if uh, you have you know, mild or moderate sleep apnea, there is an alternative to a CPAP mask, which the compliance is probably not as good with, with many patients. And that's using the oral appliances, and that can be done by an uh, oral surgeon or a dentist that is specialized in this field. Interesting. Thank you. Let's go to Jane who's waiting patiently. Hi, Jane. I'm going to Midtown Manhattan. Oh, Midtown Manhattan. It's great to hear from you. Did you go out for Mother's Day yesterday, uh, on Sunday? Oh, I wasn't well. I've been in home for a long time. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have a, pul a pulmonary question. But c did, did you go out for Mother's Day this Sunday? Or no. You stayed, you stayed home? Well, I, because I can't, I don't know when I can go out. Sometimes it's my coughing just takes me, uh, uh, takes me out of it. I see. Okay. So how so is it? I have asthma, COPD, asthma, asthma, aspergillus. Okay. And I've had this, I've, I've been, I've had a lot of um, medication. And uh, last year, last uh, summer, I got a cough, and I still have the cough. I mean, a cough with a lot of sputum and horror. And so I had pneumonia on in October, 
I had an, uh, five days in the hospital, and then and then I had pneumonia in in uh, for eight days in in uh, uh, February. Jane, how old and are you? So, how old, okay. you, how old are you, Jane? 76. 76. So we're going to ask Dr. Maristami to jump in here. Sounds like yes, you have a lot please. of lung problems. So uh, this cough has been going on for a year, uh, Jane? Well, this cough, but I've had asthma forever, and I, had, I was also intubated, you know. They made a mistake at the hospital, sent me home, and then I come back. I was in 21 days. So the problem with that was they gave me so much prednisone, uh, that I didn't know anything about for his own, but and I was on for a long time, and now I have osteoporosis, serious. So you know? what's the question, Jay? So question? My, my question is, uh, is there, can you recommend a medicine? I can't seem to get one from any doctor. Well, so stop this coughing. <laughs> yeah, I have a question. You mentioned about aspergillus. Was it uh, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis? Is that, did they do a lung biopsy on you? Oh, yeah, everything. Okay. <laughs> So this uh, allergic bronchopulmonary aspergillosis, you know, it's uh, presented with asthma, abnormality in your lungs. Unfortunately, uh, the only medication that is available to treat it is uh, prednisone at this time, and it's long term, uh, anywhere from six to 12 months, and you have to gradually taper that off. Oh, yes, I, well, I've done that already. Because, right. like, it was five years ago when I had this uh, almost death, you know? Right. But, so now, um, I keep getting a lot of radiation with, uh, you know, MRIs and, you know, uh, x-rays and whatever is around. So I want to know why I can't find a medicine for this cough. And this cough is loaded with sputum, well, you know. Are, so, are, you, are, are you on prednisone now? No, now I'm not on prednisone, no. Okay. You know, when did you come off of it? Well, like two years ago. Okay. You, uh, are you fo being followed by a pulmonologist? Yes, yes. Okay. You know, you, you, they may want, did you have a repeat CAT scan done to see if there is a recurrence? Oh, yes. I've had and an MRI and okay. x-rays, you know, because I've been in and out of the hospital. I mean, there may be a need for, to repeat, uh, you know, the course of prednisone. You may want to talk to your pulmonologist. There are some inhalers that may assist you with that, but... Like what? What inhalers? I take now... Uh, okay. and, and Arabid. Not well, Arabid, um, Cerevid. That's fine, but you may need additional prednisone. That's something that you have to determine with your uh, pulmonologist. So is that really the only thing? At this point, yes. Uh, that's the only thing. There are, if one has to be on a long-term prednisone, there are some uh, medication, they call them, uh, you know, steroid sparing medication, which your, your pulmonologist could discuss with you in detail. Uh, thanks, well, Jane, and if you need a second opinion, you know, you've got Dr. Maristami, you can call back, but try and follow that advice. Get in and see your pulmonologist there. I just saw her last week, you know. Uh, ask the thing. questions about the steroid, the, the steroid sparing medication. Okay? Oh, okay. And, and call us All back, right. please, okay? All right. Thank All right, you. thanks for calling, Jane. I see we have Madeline on line three. Hello, Madeline? Madeline? Yes. Maddie, hi, how are you? Hi. How are you? I'm hanging in there. <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't hear from you with the first caller, so we thought something might be wrong. No, I, I fell, and yes. I, I was all night out in the bathroom, and I couldn't get up. Yeah. And uh, then finally, I, I, I pushed myself on my behind into the, into the room, to call up, and I called up my daughter, and they sent an ambulance. When was I, this, Maddie? Hey? Huh? When was this? Yesterday. Wow, I thought you were saying you were trying to call ask the doctor and this happened, but this happened yesterday. Yeah, I know. And you're back home now? Yeah. You feeling better? Yeah. That's good. I guess um, yeah, it's a I problem. Have a, I have a lady that, that's helping me out here. Does anybody have any comments if you see patients who are older or might have trouble in the house to give them some kind of a, a pin yeah. or something they can press to uh, call for help? Now, and I wanted to know uh, uh, if it's just, you know, taking uh, uh, painkillers and whatever. I didn't want to go to the hospital. It's always good. I mean, obviously nothing was broken. It sounds like, you yeah. know, they thought you were well yeah, enough to go so home. But it's so painful. Oh. You know, because of... Any really pain medication you find better for an elderly yeah, person? Yeah, yeah, I have medication. Let me ask Dr. Nalu which one she likes. Yeah. I always prefer Tylenol. Um, Tylenol. Uh, 
What are you Which taking, Betty? I'm taking the... What the heck is it? I don't know the name. But anyway, don't take too much of it because it might make you fall again. Huh? Try, you know, try and take his Tylenol like Dr. Nilu suggested. See if that helps. Yeah. Maddie, thanks for calling. You're welcome. We hope you feel better. Okay, thank you. Take care. Loyal listener, I'm sorry that happened. Bob? Yes. Bob, where are you calling us from? Uh, Staten Island, Doctor. Staten Island. Did you go out on Mother's Day? Yes, I did. Where did you go? I went to Andrews on Highland Boulevard in Gray Guild. How Was it very crowded? Yes, it was. Most restaurants are on Mother's Day very crowded. It's a catch-22. You don't know what to do, right? It's just well, you know what to do. You eat too much. That's what you do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's that really nice restaurant that's up on the second floor in a little shopping center? Uh, Bella Vita? I think so. It's upstairs? Yeah, it's an Italian restaurant. Yeah, isn't that nice? I like that place. Yeah, very nice. Very nice. I've, so, I've been there also. Another a nice place. What's doing in Staten Island tonight? Doctor, let me explain my problem. Okay. Eight years ago, I went to my dentist and I was diagnosed with oral cancer. He saw a white spot under the right side of my tongue. Since eight years, I have had eight operations where I go to my ear, nose, and throat doctor. He sees a spot. They will sometimes remove it. The biopsy comes back, leukoplakia or dysplasia. I've been in Presbyterian Hospital now for seven times removing these things because they say dysplasia, I never heard that word before, is a cell that's not cancer, but it's almost cancer, so they remove it to be safe. Right. Am I going to have this ongoing, uh, uh, it's, going, it's gone for eight years, I see my doctor every three months. Is there any way this stops? Because, you know, radiation, the salivary glands, I've never had that, and I don't want radiation. How old are you? I have all my teeth. I'm 70 years old. I have all my teeth, and I don't want radiation because the roots of my, my teeth will go, and my salivary glands will be hard swallowing, making saliva. They've been removing them, and so far I've been surviving it that way. But is that what I, I mean, is there any cure for this? Yeah, I mean, I don't think I Dr. Like Maristami is going to take a I stand. I mean, I, I have a it's limited. A tough question. I need an ear, nose, and throat guy with this one. Well, I, I could tell you, uh, you know, based on the experience I had with one of my patients who was diagnosed with the adenocystic carcinoma of the uh, salivary gland, and th you know, there are places that they give instead of the regular standard radiation, they give neutron and uh, proton, and they don't have the same. Side effects. Side effects. Yeah. yeah. That's but right uh, now they're just cutting it out. It comes back and well, cut it out. If it's a displeasure, they cut it down. Yeah. Yeah. I don't, you know, we, we, we do have an actually an H, uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor right on towards the end of the season. Yes, I'm sorry, because I was just concerned, you know, when I, yeah. I, I, you know, I figured I'd, I'd give you guys a shot, you know, but it's, it, it seems like, you know, they, it's a minor procedure, but when you go under general anesthesia and you're on a gurney and you're wheeled into the operating room and yeah. the blood work and the whole thing, it's, yeah. not, it's not a minor procedure anymore. I'm glad your dentist picked it up. Yes, he, he, was, he was very nice. He, and it was a small little white spot. Oh. And it was under the tongue. Oh. Craziest oh. thing. Feel better. Thank you. Dr. Nikita, I've got to ask you a question here. You know, short of having an angiogram, I've heard of a CAT scan of the coronary arteries, people that don't want to go in. What do you think about that? Um, we were talking once about this uh, in the program. I'm actually uh, very supportive of this test because uh, this test is available uh, right now to, to cardiologists and medical uh, doctors for five or six years. What it allows us, it allows us to see the inside of a vessel. Um, much better than um, the other test allowed us, I mean, a prior test like a stress test allowed us. And at the same time, it's not invasive procedure, it's regular CAT scan. Um, invasive procedure, which we, we would compare it with, uh, would be a catheterization. And although it's a gold standard and the, the, the best test available uh, at this point of time, it's still invasive. So the patient who would have a procedure done, it should go through the hospital. At the same time, CAT scan, which um, done in regular radiology office uh, can allow us to get to see plaques, small plaques, uh, larger plaques, and um, the test, test takes about 10 seconds to do. So we have all information right on the tips of the finger. So I think it's good for those who are maybe fearful of going for the angiogram, this is maybe the next best thing. And uh, 
the intermediate step in yeah. between uh, doing some procedure and invasive procedure, especially for people who are really anxious, as you said. All right. Let's go now to Lisa on line four. Hi, Lisa. Hi, how are you? Where are you calling us from? Sheepshead Bay. And what did you do for Mother's Day? Stayed home, relaxed. Yeah, it's, it's tough to go out. We went to the River Cafe. It's beautiful there. Wa you know, watch the boats go by. It was really oh, nice. Oh, that's nice. That's nice over there. Very nice. And Sheepshead Bay is a beautiful area. It is pretty. What's, um, you know, Pips, is that, it's not there anymore, is it? The no, comedy club. It's, it, now it's a Japanese restaurant. <laughs> wow. D that was a great place for comedians to get it their was, stars. It was. It was so nice there. How is the El Greco Diner still there? It's still there. I, I eat there occasionally. That's not bad. No, it's pretty good. Very busy. Where do you like to go? Um, Brandon and Carr, Rolling Roaster. Oh, on Nostrand Avenue. Yeah. Very nice place. It is good. They own that Kennedy's, I think, in um, Far Rockaway. Or oh, do they re really? Busy Point, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. So um, are you feeling okay tonight? I'm fine. I'm calling from uh, my husband. What can we do Actually, for you? I have a question. Okay. Um, he's 50. And he's in good general health. Um, he has a history of insomnia. Um, this is my question. He has some serious neck injuries, and he's prescribed hydrocodone, 10 milligrams twice a day is needed. And he finds that when he takes them, they actually make his insomnia worse. They keep him, he feels that they make him wide awake. They keep them up at night. And I was wondering if this is common, if you've heard of this, and um, what you could tell me about it. Okay. Um, yes, insomnia is very common. Actually, it can start off with medical conditions such as pain syndromes or especially after some fractures or any kind of injuries. Usually what happens is the painkillers, um, they tend to make you drowsy but not put you in a deep stage of sleep. In fact, some of those medications prevent you from going into deep stages of sleep. Right, he's, uh, he's wide awake with them, like he's had six cups of coffee. Yes, and uh, the other problem with most of these medications is also that they, you tend to take them during the day when you have these pain. So you tend to have these short naps or a drowsy period, which, y which can come out of your nighttime sleep. So. Uh, wow. The body, you know, when, when you already have enough pain and, you know, you're not able to physically be active as you used to be, the body does not require that many hours of sleep as before. So it tends to, um, you know, cut down on the sh sleep at night and because you're taking the short naps during the day, you, you tend to have much worsening sleep at night. He generally doesn't take naps during the day. Um, he has the pre-existing condition of the insomnia where sometimes he's wide awake until 4, 5, 6 in the morning and when he has to take the pain medication, it just keeps him up longer. Mm -hmm. um, I guess the second part of my question actually would be, would, do you think that if he went for a sleep study, would it in fact be helpful? Well, sleep study is not necessarily done for all patients who have sleep um, disorders. For example, insomnic uh, patients do not require a sleep study oh. because if I send a patient who have difficulty falling asleep for a sleep study, of course they're not going to sleep in that sleep study, so it's a useless test. Right. So um, you t you first what we do is we sit down with the patient, we try to get the history and examination, and we kind of make a plan for them. We try to um, treat them with medications for sleeping problems and despite of that if the patient tends to have insomnia then we do send them for sleep study to rule out underlying sleep problems. Thank you for the question. Thank Thanks so Lisa. Much. Take care. We're going to take a short break. I just have to get one question into Dr. Nikitina. I saw in the, um, there was a hospital in the Midwest that was sued for doing too many stents, that doing unnecessary stents. If anybody here has been recommended to have a stent, what do you advise them? How do they they know that it's really necessary. And most of, the, most of the stents placed on a patient who comes with acute uh, heart attack. So it is a um, common knowledge and that, uh, practice right now. If patient comes with a chest pain early in a uh, heart attack, we put a stents. What potentially could happen in that situation that the, the same time when they do procedure and look on the vessels and they see that there are several vessels involved in a significant process of, of blockages. Uh, the doctors have a tendency to put one stent and clean one vessel and then he says another vessel is blocked. So we try to open another vessel even though we don't know if that vessel actually was responsible for any problems. 
It's always good to get a second opinion, too, sure. I guess. So let's take a short break. When we come back, we're going to go to the rapid fire segment of our show. We're going to be taking your questions on pediatric neurology, uh, sleep medicine, internal medicine, pulmonary medicine, cardiology, where we have Dr. Sagarika Nalu, Dr. Ramin Miristami, and Dr. Anesthesia Nikitna. We'll be right back. <music> Place your business on TV by becoming a sponsor to one of NET's family-friendly programs. See an increase in your revenue by reaching a potential audience of 4.3 million viewers in the tri-state area. We have a number of packages available and we'll even produce your commercial. For information, contact us at the number on your screen and get ready to see yourself on NET. Welcome back to Ask the Doctor. We have so many questions. I'm going to dispense the formalities, and we're going to go right to our question line. We have Vivian on line two. Hi, Vivian. Oh, good evening. I happen to be channel surfing tonight and stumbled upon your program, and I'm fascinated by it, and I was compelled to call. So here oh. I am. Where are you calling us from? Uh, Bayside, Queens. Bayside, Queens. And the first time you've seen the show? First time. We always like to know what you like to eat. So your first time call, what do you, you ever eat at Ben's out there in that shopping Area? I've eaten there. That's not my favorite place. Which my, is it? My favorite place when when out of business and, and now they're reopening. I don't know if they're going to have. It was the Bayside Diner. Are that closed? They closed and now now they're going to be reopening. That's but around I, the movie theater area. Um. Well, it's more towards the Clearview Expressway. Oh. oh. Very nice. I hope it reopens. We lost one the Kings Plaza Diner here in Brooklyn, which we we used to like a lot. But what can we do for you? Well. I'm kind of the person who takes care of everybody else, but then doesn't do so well of taking care of myself. And I have two c issues that I'm kind of concerned with, which I'm not as concerned with my diabetes because I'm kind of naughty when it comes to that. But I have in my legs, um, I think it was called fasciculations, but I'm not really sure if I'm using the right word. I have fasciculations. It's, I have like, when I wake up, I'm, I'm more aware of it than, than even now during the course of the day. But you'll see the mo movement in your legs, like it almost looks like a heartbeat, um, like muscle spasms, as well as occasionally I do get terrible, terrible. How, how old are you? Oh, now we're getting ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just entered Medicare, 65. 65, that's, and you sound great. Thank so you. So let's, let's jump in. I know you have diabetes, you said? Yes, I do. Any other medical problems? Um, well, I did have high triglycerides, but now... Um, okay. That's pretty much under control. So I am taking different medications. Um, I do have a chiropractor be, uh, who works on my back because I've had trouble with lower back. And I don't know if it's relevant to the legs because I, I have one of two problems with my legs. Okay, we're going we're gonna to go right to our answer now. Okay. The um, fasciculations in the leg is bothering when she gets up. Uh, what, what, what can she do? What's well, going on? Well, fasciculations is basically it's the muscle twitches that you can visibly see them. And um, they can be related to numerous uh, problems, including diabetes, uh, low potassium, and magnesium, and stuff like that. So a thorough physical exam and you know, medical workup and blood workup should be um, you know, uh, necessary to see w what is the cause of your physical issues. Vivian, it's great to have you on board. And uh, you'll turn in next week at 8 o'clock. OK, I'm going to. Um, I don't even know what number you're on. But um, what do you what have, cable you vision? Uh, yes. Channel 30, and you can see last week's show at 10 o'clock tonight. Okay. Um, usually I come home actually later because I take care of my 94-year-old mother and I'm wow. still working full time, but I'm going to try my darndest to catch you guys. Also, I get terrible um, Charlie horses sometimes, and I get scared, but then they usually, I hate to say it, but it's involved mm -hmm. also with the bowels. If I can make my way as I'm hobbling to the, to the bathroom, and once I void something or other, um, they dissipate. Yeah. The jolly horses, but if I'm stretching in bed, I can trigger them. Vivian, I got to move on, but okay. I thank you, and um, we'll leave that as a cliffhanger for next week. Okay. Okay. Thank Thanks. You very Take much. care. Let's go to Rose. Hi, Rose. Hi. Rose, where are you calling us from? Bed Stuy. Bed Stuy. Nothing out there to eat, or is there any Nothing good restaurant? Nothing at all. No, we always <laughs> have that problem. I think we can make money with a restaurant on Bed Stuy. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Where, where do you go? The city when you like to eat? No, downtown Brooklyn. Ah, to Juniors or where? To to the Queen. You got it. That's right. Uh, yeah, I know, great place. I got to move fast, Michelle. They're telling okay. me so. Tell me the issue. My question is, on my left side, you know, the rib in the front. Yes. 
sometimes I get like a knot cramp there. And I told my medical doctor, and he said that's because I had a surgery in the back, you know, from the back to get to the lungs. All right, I'm going to go to Mir Dr. Miristami right away for this rapid fire segment of pain near, near a previous biopsy or surgery site. Well, what kind of surgery did you have, Rose? Excuse me? What kind of surgery did you have? Um, a surgery for uh, a fungus ball on the lung. Fungus ball? On the lung. Okay, did they, did they open the lung or did they do it la, uh, video assisted? The they took out the medial part of the lung. Yes. Did they, did they cut you or did they do it through the... Uh, no, they cut. They cut. Well, sometimes when they do the uh, surgery, when they cut, they uh, inadvertently, they uh, touch the nerve ending and the nerves are cut and sometimes you may feel this pain and discomfort for a long time. Sorry about that, Rose. It's a complication, but I um, hope you feel better. And call back next week. Okay, thanks. Take care. Carlos, you're on the Rapid Fire segment. How are you? Hi, doctor. Carlos, where are you calling us from? I'm calling from uh, Canarsie, Rapid Shavenu. Oh, beautifully. I love that area. And oh, it's very nice, yeah. What can we do for you? Because we're in a Rapid Fire segment. I want to talk okay, about restaurants. Okay, doctor, rest I yeah. have two things. I, I, I recently, for the past month now, what I, what I, what's happening is that I... Uh, I'm discovering when I'm going to bed at night time, I'm getting my electricity running through my body sometimes. What's running through your body? I like electricity running through electricity. my body. Electricity? Yeah, like it's running through my stomach and through my legs and through my arms. Is the I'm wiring my legs okay? And my arms, you know? Yeah, you're not, you're and then I go to sleep. And then when I go to sleep at night, what happens is when I'm sleeping at night time also, I jump up like, like a shock. I'm going to get you, know? you two quick answers on this. Electricity, Dr. Nikita, he's got electricity running through him. Almost feels like a shock, and he wakes up. Uh, what makes it worse, actually? Is there anything uh, at actually? You know, when I get it is when I drink water. When you get the water, you, you, drink you water. When I drink water, I get a little bit nauseous, and then I start feeling the tingling. Essentially, potentially could be, again, if you're drinking something or you swallow something, it can be related to gastrointestinal problems. And again, the stomach is close by to the, the nervous system in the belly. So sometimes if anything um, growing in, inside of the stomach can uh, affect the nervous system. Um, if you never had an endoscopy, or uh, still, um, maybe the first step is nice to, to see your primary care physician and who will examine you and see if anything he can palpate or she can palpate. Call us, you need that good physical exam, okay? And we can give you a yeah. referral if you call us after the show, okay? Okay, thank you. Thanks, Carlos. Let's go to Amisha. Hi, Amisha. Hello. I like that name. What does it mean? Excuse me? What does the name Amisha mean? Amisha? Yeah. Is that your name? Um, I don't know what it means, but it's Anisha with an N, A-N. Oh, Anisha. Anisha. Yeah. Oh, what does that mean? I don't know. Never looked it's it up. It's a nice name. It has a nice, it a nice ring it to is. it, Anisha. Thank you. Very nice. What, where are you calling us from? Coney Island. Coney Island, the home of the cyclones. and the. Uh, you ever gone there, cyclone? Yes, I have. That's a good ride. I don't know if you've ever been on that. Yeah. Everybody's been on So what can we do for you? Okay, I have um, de degenerative disc disease, but lately in my shoulder, my, both my shoulders and my neck, and I'm getting a serious pain, and I can barely move my neck. Like I can't put my head up or down or even turn my neck, and now the pain is starting to shoot down my arm. All right, I want and you to hold it right there, Dr. Nalu. Well, most of the time with the degenerative um, disc disease, you have the risk of compression of those nerves, and um, that's where the pain is coming from. So you have to prevent the nerves from being compressed. So they can do surgery, they can do preventive, you know, uh, positional um, treatments, and um, so you require a neurological workup for that. A neurological workup? Yeah, starting okay. with an MRI. So you have the number in front of you, you can make an appointment with us, or you, you, you know, if you want a referral, we can help you with that, okay? Okay. Anisha, good to talk to you. Call back. All right. Let's talk now to Katiana. Katiana? Yes? Hi. Is Katiana a Russian name? Ukrainian. Ukrainian, yeah, because Tatiana, I know, the restaurant on the boardwalk, very nice. What can we do for Katiana? Uh, yes, hello, everybody. Um, my question is the following. Um, I have a five-year-old child with autism. She was in the ER last week, was diagnosed with mono. Um, but the problem is I found out from blood tests that she has very high cholesterol level. What could this be, and what would be your advice? 
Dr. Nalu. Well, a um, lot of children with autism do have very picky eating problems. So um, it could be related to the eating problems also. But um, high cholesterol itself, um, you know, it can tend to run in the family. So you need more thorough blood work to see what is the, um, the cause of the high cholesterol and probably um, in a dietary regimen, you know, dietary restrictions and even sometimes uh, treatment with medication. And how is he doing with the model? Um, he is recovering but very slowly. It's interesting. Do you see a lot of five-year-olds with mono? Not necessarily, but we do see some. So we hope you hope it works out for you. Thanks for the uh, call. We'll go down to Isabella. Hi, Isabella. Hi. How are you? Hi. We have, you're the last caller of the night. So what oh, can great. we do for you? Um, I just have a question. Um, I've been. Um, I went to see a cardiologist on this case, and I did an EKG for chest pain that I've been having since mm -hmm. towards the end of February of this year. And they, the cardiologist over there, and everything came normal. He prescribed me to take Motrin for like about a week, and basically saying, you know, there's everything came out normal. There's nothing wrong with you. But I've been having complaining of this chest pain every time I take a deep breath. How old are you? 25. Dr. Dr. Nikita. Uh, you mentioned that the, the doctor did every, every possible test. Did they Correct. do a uh, stress test or not? No, the doctor said, the cardiologist said that after I finished taking the Motrin. Again, um, um, if, if the doctor did a, a simple test and you still continue to have a symptoms despite of the medication he gave you, I uh, advise you to do an extra step. Uh, being, again, in the 21st century, we have a lot of modalities which are very safe for you, for a young woman, and you can uh, make sure that there is nothing wrong with your heart. So i got to move. Uh, Isabella, I hope that this helps. Um, you've got numbers to call. We'll be happy to help you after the show, okay? I'm going to move on because this is it. I, we, we need another hour for this show. But uh, I want to thank Dr. Sigarika Nalu, Dr. Ramin Meristami, and Dr. Anastasia Nikitna, Nikitna excuse me, for coming in. We hope we were able to help you. Now, it's good to remember you should always be proactive about your health. Speak to your doctors about your concerns. Go for second or even third opinions, the way we've spoken about tonight. In the meantime, you visit our website at netny.net slash askthedoctor. Here you can see my video blogs, the tablet column, podcast, the forum, and many more. I want to thank Linda Lapatosa, the quiz master, for her excellent quiz today. I want to thank you all for your questions. I want to say goodbye. I'll see you in the tablet. Be well.